Michael here for another awesome week in Lego news with huge Star Wars reveals like the return of Captain Rex, life-size Black Panther bust, and is the Hulkbuster canceled? 51 Lego Ideas projects make it to review. And what's the deal with expensive Lego sets these days? And a huge shout out for all the support in last week's video. And I'll kick off another round of the weekly giveaway. Just subscribe and leave a comment about this week's news. And of course, I'm back with Lego deals from Amazon and across the web. So if you want to pick anything up to support the channel, there's links in the description below. First up over at Zavi, the Lego Optimus Prime is 17% off. The Lego Ghostbusters Ecto-1 is 21% off. And the Lego Technic for our Daytona is 20% off. Next over at Amazon, the Lego Minecraft The Villager Raid is 34% off. From Lego Super Mario, Mario's House and Yoshi Expansion Set is 32% off. From Lego City, the Wildlife Rescue Off-Roader is 24% off, and the Picnic in the Park Set is 23% off. Plus, from Lego Disney, Jasmine and Mulan's Adventure is 40% off. And if you want to pick up any of these deals or more and support the channel, there's links in the description below. Next, in Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga news, over at Disney's D23 Expo, we got the reveal of the upcoming Galactic Edition digital copy of the game, which will be available November 1st for $80. This Galactic Edition is special as it comes with the character collections 1 and 2, which includes 13 character packs from across the Star Wars canon. Beyond the character packs included in the original Deluxe Edition in the game, this one will feature six brand new character packs based off of Andor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, The Clone Wars, The Book of Boba Fett, Star Wars Rebels, and Lego Star Wars Summer Vacation. But the standout to most fans was the Clone Wars pack, as it gave us our first look at a brand new version of Phase 2 Captain Rex. It's so exciting to see him in the game, and the design looks really nice, as this updated design looks a lot better than the last version of the minifigure that we got back in 2013. And getting to see this figure is of course leading many to speculate whether or not we could be getting an upcoming set featuring this new Captain Rex, which isn't impossible to believe as a Phase 2 Commander Cody came in the game before we ever got him in the recent ATT, though it's important to note that the designs don't perfectly match. It's also rumored that we're getting a Phase 2 Captain Rex helmet set, so it could just be in reference to that. But besides Captain Rex, I'd expect a couple reskins of classic characters like Anakin and Obi-Wan, not to mention all of the different Jedi and troopers that we see. And you've got to imagine that Cad Bane could be in there. From Obi-Wan Kenobi, we saw gameplay of the third sister, Reva, who looked awesome with the double-ended lightsaber. As for other characters, we'll of course get Obi-Wan, and I have to imagine we'll see the Inquisitors, Tala Dureth, and maybe Ned B. From Andor, we of course got a great look at Cassian Andor in the game, who looks like a lot of fun. But as we've only gotten one set from Andor and two additional minifigures, I'm curious which of these secondary characters they'll pull from. For the Book of Boba Fett, it'll be interesting, as in the Mandalorian Season 2 character pack, we actually got the Boba Fett re-armored and Fennec Shand figures. So I'm expecting others like Black Chrysanthemum, Scad and Drash, Cad Bane, the Tuscans, or even Mandalorian favorites like Cobb Vanth and the Armorer. Fans will be excited for Star Wars Rebels, and I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of our favorites like Ezra, Chopper, Kanan, Hera, Zeb, Sabine Wren, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. And for LEGO Star Wars Summer Vacation, I'd expect the vacation versions of Finn, Darth Vader, and Emperor Palpatine. Plus, maybe this version of C-3PO and R2-D2, but I'm just hoping for Weird Al. Next in Marvel news, it was rumored the $500 set would be a Wakanda Forever set and feature one of their iconic vehicles. But that was until we got the reveal of the life-size Black Panther bust with 2,961 pieces, retailing for $350 on October 1st. And it's interesting as this set number was originally held to be that new Hulkbuster set, so it's unclear if the Hulkbuster will be $500 or if it may have been delayed to next year. Whatever the case may be, the build here for this life-size bust is 19 inches tall and 16 inches wide and recreates the iconic hero, Black Panther. It also features two arms posed in the Wakanda Forever pose, though those can be removed. The overall build is just so impressive. The shaping for the main helmet looks really amazing, as it takes a lot of unique shaping and parts usage to figure out all those multifaceted curves. And I really like how the ears turned out. They also did a nice job capturing the markings on the face with those drum lacquered silver pieces and the unique details for the eyes. At the bottom, we can see Black Panther hands with the display plaque. The build reminds me of those two Infinity Gauntlet sets, and just like those, they feature posable fingers. And just behind them, we can see the shoulder section draped with the Black Panther claw necklace. The build itself is super stunning and incredibly large in size, and it definitely would be a very interesting building experience. But since the set's reveal, it's also gotten a lot of pushback, so much so that the designer of the set had to respond. But I believe while this set isn't everyone's favorite, it is a worthy set, and tribute to the late Chadwick Boseman, who played the character in the MCU you before passing away. Not to mention that Black Panther was the sixth highest grossing superhero film of all time and the second highest featuring a solo character. But beyond whether the set should have been made, it is quite an expensive set at $350 with just over 2,900 pieces. But as a comparison, the Mighty Bowser, which also comes out on October 1st, features 154 less pieces and actually retails for $80 cheaper, which brings up the discussion about how expensive Lego is getting, especially with the 18 plus line and the highest end set.
sets, most of which also received a recent price increase. So let's talk about it. In comparison, Hasbro also makes Marvel toys and is looking to attract a variety of customers with its action figures, role play items, play vehicles, etc. And as you can see from the products shown here, Lego is doing the exact same thing by producing a variety of projects which bring in a whole host of different kinds of Marvel fans that may not have already been fans of Lego. By producing their life-size Black Panther bus, they're likely appealing to those into high-end collectibles like this Black Panther bus which is also life-size by Queen Studios. And while likely more screen accurate, it also costs $760. It's also important to note that Lego's focus on their 18 plus line for adults is a relatively new experiment for them and it has changed the consumer in their mind. The 18 plus line for Lego is really about premium display worthy builds, which is why we have a lot more of these sculptural builds as part of the larger 18 plus line. And for Lego, it offers both a challenging experience to satiate adults and something worth keeping out at their home. And to entice adult shoppers to buy their first and expensive Lego set, they're relying on things adults know, like classic rock bands, their favorite football team, or classic video games, movies, and TV shows that they grew up with. But as they bring in new fans, they also remember their A-falls by bringing them classic favorites like Lego Castle and Classic Space. And the sets I feel are geared towards core fans often have what people ask for, like exclusive minifigures, the ability to integrate it into a Lego city, and largely balance the potential for play and display. And while a set like Diagon Alley may perfectly appeal to core fans, we'll get Lego testing out a more sculptural build like the Hogwarts icons, which wasn't everyone's favorite. And just as the most Eisley Cantina appeals to a Star Wars fan, Lego's going to try to bring in new Star Wars fans by trying new concepts out like the Star Wars dioramas, which feel expensive if you buy every Star Wars set, but maybe not too bad if you're only going to buy one. The other category of large expensive 18 plus set are these ones that I consider Lego showpieces. These often inspire people with the capabilities of Lego bricks, from their ability to recreate notable icons to even have amazing functionality. Sets like the UCS Star Wars sets often fill this need and appeal to A-Falls, as some of them are these amazing minifigure scale ships, while others feature amazing builds but somehow miss the mark for AFAL fans with things like their minifigures. But the bigger and more detailed they go, the more expensive they go, as we saw with the $500 Hogwarts Express. One final trend we're seeing in the 18 plus line is a focus on diversity and inclusion. Representation matters, though these high prices may not be seen as inclusive, but I encourage you to seek out the communities represented to get their thoughts on it. While we all love Lego, at the end of the day, they're a profit-driven business like any other, and they get to decide which products they produce and for whom, and how much they charge you. But on the consumer side, you get to decide which sets you purchase and which sets you don't. And as someone who likes to collect every Lego idea set, I, like many of you, are learning that not every Lego set that they come out with, even from a theme you like, may be made for you. And that's okay. And with the times being what they are, I, like many of you, are gonna have to decide what really are my must-haves. Next in Lego Ideas News, there were a massive 51 projects to reach the second 2022 Lego review. I'm always surprised to see when the numbers get this high, and with 51 in this round of review, all I'm praying for is that they pick at least more than one. I always root for some of the licensed ones, like Lilo and Stitch, Rat Tui, SpongeBob, and Thomas the Tank Engine. But honestly, there's so many great submissions this time around, including many from Castle and Pirates that I'd love to see. But with 51 amazing projects to choose for, it's going to be hard for the review board team. And as always, we're gonna have to wait and see. But the good news is we will be getting some LEGO Ideas results soon, with the first round from 2022 coming this fall. In more LEGO Ideas news, there were actually four more projects that had 10,000 supporters this week. First up, we've got This Is Fine, which recreates the iconic meme of a dog sitting in a chair with a room on fire. Overall, while simple, Simple, the vignette's pretty effective, though we haven't seen a meme-type set get approved before. Next up, we've got Castle Dracula, which has a very nice gothic look as it aims to recreate the classic vampire's home. This is a unique take on the modular-style building, as the back of the whole castle opens up to reveal the interior details. And as someone who always liked the Monster Fighters line, I think this would make a really fun set. Next up, we've got the Ancient Roman Temple, which definitely gives a great look to this minifigure-scale building. The designer did a really great job bringing this temple to life with all of its its architectural detail and a fun use of color. Though interestingly, these historical sets don't seem to make it through. And the last one to sneak into the previous round was The Nightmare Before Christmas, based on the classic Disney movie. Looking to get its second chance, this build aims to recreate Halloween Town from the movie with lots of great accurate wonky details and fun interior sections. With Hocus Pocus previously approved, I'm curious how this one will do, but as always, we'll have to wait and see. So there you have it, another interesting week in LEGO news. I'm super excited about the Skywalker Saga updates and I can't wait to see 
that Black Panther bust in person. While quite expensive, this set is stunning, and I gotta figure out some way I can pick it up. But like I said, I just have to figure out which sets coming out are my true must-haves. Be sure to leave this video a thumbs up down below if you're as excited as me, and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be back next Saturday with even more LEGO news. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think about all the stories, and which one are you most excited about? And now we've got this week's giveaway winner. Congratulations, and be sure to email me from the About page on my channel so we can coordinate about the prize. And if you want to enter this week's round, just leave me a comment about this week's news. You must be a subscriber to win, and definitely turn on notifications to find out when my next video is posted, because I'll be announcing the winners at the end of some of the videos. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks, and have a good one! Michael here, click it to check out last week's video featuring Disney 100th Anniversary minifigures, 2023 City, Halloween exclusives, and more, and don't forget to subscribe!